God help us. Let me ask you something, folks. Do you know what a nerd is? You know, the real smart, socially awkward kid that got pushed around and the book slapped out their hands in high school? You know, the Mark Zuckerbergs, the Bill Gates, the Albert Einsteins, the Nikola Teslas. You know, that guy. Did you notice these days people are proud to be nerds? They embrace it. It's trendy. And for some, because they're not smart enough to do anything else, they become video game nerds and Japanimation nerds and sci-fi junkies. I like video games. I love anime. And that sci-fi comic book superhero stuff entertains me greatly. But I know when to cut that shit off. What makes the nerd of today so dangerous is their obsession. All of those people I mentioned has had an effect on humanity. Not because they were smart, but because they were obsessed. That social disconnect gave them a lot of time to work on their projects and hobbies. Today we have a whole population of nerds that have no business being nerds. I'm serious. We have these gamers. The really smart ones know how to make a living doing what they do. But there's an increasing number of people who are gaming like it's their job. Making no money, spending money, not benefiting themselves or anyone around them. They're not making games, they're not selling games, they're just playing them all day. You know the people I'm talking about. Sports fans are like this. The nostalgia sucks them in. And now some bloodsucker has yet again found another way to fill their pockets off the sentiment of people's past obsessions. Pokemon Go. You can think that this is about Satan if you want, folks. This is about money. Does anyone remember the role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons? It was one of the first games where instead of controlling a character in the game, you were a character in the game. And you could remain that character for years. Three or four people would start a campaign as a character and would continue to play a single game as that character for years at a time. Until that person jumped out or quit the game or their character died. Now. This game was created in the 70s by a couple of guys, Ernest Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. Childhood friends. They both enjoyed playing card games, chess, and writing and playing their own games. They were both into medieval fantasy, so together they came up with D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. Now, there were reports about people killing themselves over this game. But does that mean that these two guys were Satanists? Or does it mean that the people who died were just game junkies? Anyway, Gary and his other friend, Don K, formed the company TSR, Tactical Studies Rules. Because Gary already had a bit of following due to being a founder of the gaming convention, Gen Con. Shortly after the creation of the company, Gary and Dave put out Dungeons & Dragons and all types of books and props to go with it. However, the company ended up not doing so well, so it was bought out by a company called Wizards of the Coast, founded by another gamer by the name of Peter Atkinson. It was just a publishing company that opened a bunch of stores where people could buy collectible card and board games. Later, Richard Garfield comes along with a trading card game idea, which through revision and testing became Magic the Gathering because people would gather at a gaming convention and this was a way to pass time. It only takes a few minutes to play a single game. Now, this game is really just a spin-off of Dungeons and Dragons, so the theme of the game is, yes, a bit dark, morbid, even demonic. It is. But trust me, folks, you're not gonna be able to summon demons with the Magic the Gathering gathering cards. Now, Wizards of the Coast became a subsidiary of the toy making company Hasbro and they would later put out a card game based on the video game series created in Japan, Pokemon. 
Now this is very significant folks and I'm going to tell you why. Nintendo put out the video game series Pokemon in Japan. Wizards of the Coast got the rights to Pokemon and put out the collectible card game here in the US and other places. When the Pokemon company and Nintendo got the rights back, they used the same version of Pokemon that was put out by Wizards of the Coast. It led to a lawsuit that was set out, settled out of court. That's why Pokemon is a hybrid of Magic the Gathering and the early Pokemon Game Boy games. This is why you see the same element symbols, Earth, Fire, Wind, Water, and Metal, on both the Magic the Gathering game and Pokemon. And these symbols show up in Japanese, the Japanese series Avatar with element bending. It's used in Feng Shui, Wu Xing, the martial arts, and ancient Chinese medicine. These symbols and flowchart are a representation of the flow of energy in the universe and do not represent the Illuminati. It's crazy. People think the Illuminati is the only secret society out there, and for the record, they weren't Satan worshippers. Of course, there are a few bad apples in the bunch, but what they were formed to do has nothing to do with Satan the devil. God. The Catholic Church were the ones doing evil. That's why they formed the Illuminati to expose the church. Which brings us back to another rebellious creation, Pokemon. Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of Pokemon, was a rebellious little kid. He is also known as the Pokemon character, Ash. But as a little boy, he didn't go along with his parents' Christian beliefs and values. He was a lonely, nerdy kid that was obsessed with collecting bugs. They actually called him Bug Boy or Dr. Bug. That's what Pokemon is, collecting bugs. And he would observe that some of the bugs would fight and eat each other. So he threw those, con he threw those concepts together to make Pokemon or Pocket Monster. Little monsters that can be stored in capsules. And that idea was inspired by the old TV show Ultraman. Ultraman had capsule monsters that he would let loose to help him fight. This was one of Satoshi Tajiri's favorite TV shows as a kid. Now, when these larger companies get a hold of your work's rights, then they can do almost anything they want with it. Niantic Labs just took a nostalgic, popular theme and mixed it with their geospatial mapping technology. Before Pokemon Go, there was Ingress, and there are several other augmented reality games out there. One game can turn your house into a haunted house. There are much more games out there that are 10 times more demonic than Pokemon. Hell, look at Yu-Gi-Oh! What's happening with this Pokemon Go game is that people are being stupid. That's it. People are falling off the cliffs, getting hit by cars, robbed, stabbed, shot. People are finding dead bodies and witnessing murders. People are losing their jobs, money, and families, getting arrested because of their obsessions. Listen to me carefully, folks. Games are not meant to be played all day, every day. Turn that shit off. No, I gotta catch them all. Well, damn, you're gonna be playing that game forever. Maybe something bad needs to happen to you so you can wake up and stop playing that stupid game. But it's helping people to be more active. It's curing diabetes. Are you kidding me? You're that sad of a person that it takes Pokemon to get you to get your ass off the couch? This can't be the world we live in, folks. I don't even like Pokemon. I think the characters look stupid. The concept has been repeated numerous times. Kids like colorful, crazy looking shit that they can play with their friends. So it sells. And as much as I despise Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and all the other dumb Japanese crap that's been coming out of that country lately, I mean, anime used to be spectacular. Now it's just a bunch of quick computerized crazy looking nonsense. But as much as I hate it, I'm not going to blame Pokemon or the devil. I'm going to blame you. Because what's crazier, the person who makes the game or the person who plays it? <laughs>